If you're looking to improve your hip external rotation, then in this video, you're gonna learn a quick little three exercise routine to do just that, whether your goal is to improve your pigeon pose or your game in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yo, what's up? Coach E here from Precision Movement. And today we're gonna work on improving your external rotation of the hip. So hip external rotation is there. When the femur, if there's a flashlight and the light, the beam is pointing, shining that way, it's gonna shine out that way. That's hip external rotation. This is hip internal rotation. External rotation, internal rotation, okay? This can, this movement is when you have the hip flexed or extended, neutral, or when the hip is flexed. When the hip is flexed and the knee's bent like this, external rotation looks like that. Internal rotation looks like that. Don't have much when I'm at 90 degrees there. So that's external rotation. So that remind, might remind you of like pigeon pose or when you're in guard in jujitsu, especially you're doing those crazy Eddie Bravo guards. That's hip external rotation there, okay? So, the first technique that we're gonna do is the standing hip rotation dissociation. And I just shot a video in this video session here on that. So we're just gonna splice that in right now. So let's splice that in and then we'll come back and we'll do the other two exercises that are focused on just external rotation. Stand on one leg. This is the leg that's gonna move. So we're gonna do both internal and external rotation here. I use this technique to warm up for both, to activate those muscles for both, whether I'm working the internal or external rotation. When you externally rotate, all you're gonna do is turn your torso and your head the opposite direction. Hold strong, keep externally rotating that, the hip and keep turning the torso and the head this way and that'll really activate the external rotators, hold for one slow 360 breath. Expand the chest in all directions, but don't overuse the neck and shoulder muscles. And then you're gonna move into hip internal rotation. It's important to keep the knee straight as I look the other way. And keep getting more internal rotation as I'm getting more spine rotation this way. Hold for slow 360. Okay. Now, if you have trouble with balance, totally cool to hold on to something, or just place your heel on the ground and pivot around your heel. Okay. I'm going to do a couple on the other side. So get my heel down, external rotation, and turning the torso in the opposite direction. You'll feel glute media, glute max really fire up here piriformis, and then internal rotation. So muscle activation the whole time, turning the whole time, turning my body, trying to get further even though I'm at the end, trying to turn that hip in even though I'm not moving. All right, so you do about three reps on, in each direction on each side and that's going to dissociate the movement pattern. So oftentimes when I externally rotate my hip, the tendency is just to open up the pelvis. So the pelvis goes with it. So the dissociation comes into play because as I'm externally rotating the hip, I'm turning the pelvis in the opposite of the natural motion that it wants to do. It's gonna get greater muscle activation and it's gonna reset that associated pattern, that coupled movement. So it opens up new movement options for you. So again, for this technique, three in each direction, internal and external rotation on each leg. Okay, so you've activated, you've dissociated. Now it's time to work on improving that mobility. And the first technique is the seated hip ER, level one ERE. So Hip ER, hip external rotation, level one, ERE stands for end range expansion. Basically, you're gonna sit cross-legged. 
Now, depending on your current range, you might be able to sit upright and tall, or you might have to lean back to make it a little bit easier to cross your leg. Whatever level you're at, it's cool. Work from that level. Don't think that if you can't sit up tall like this and do what I'm about to show you, you can't get, the mo you can't get anything out of this. You can totally lean back and regress, decrease the angle of hip flexion here, and that'll make it easier for you to do what we're gonna work through, okay? So what we're gonna do, ERE is end range expansion. That's my protocol for, that I use and apply to every range that I want to improve in somebody. So in this case, we're gonna work on this external rotation of the hip. First up, you're gonna cross your leg and just get comfortable. The first thing you're gonna do after you're comfortable is you're gonna think of external rotation. So I'm gonna shine that light, the femur, the light is on the femur, it's gonna point down now, and that's external rotation. So I'm gonna try and rotate it down and push it down like that. So see how I got a little greater external rotation and it's active. I'm not pushing my hand down on it, doing a passive stretch, but I'm actively rotating and then trying to lift the shin, the ankle just off the knee. I'm gonna hold that for one slow 360 breath. It's about eight seconds or so. And then I gradually relax back down. Let my ankle relax, and now I'm gonna do internal rotation. So for internal rotation, what I wanna focus on is driving the ankle into the knee as if I'm trying to sweep my ankle down this way, okay? So think of that motion. Ramp it up nice and strong. And again, once you're at maximum contraction, slow 360. Keep that activation going. And then gradually release the contraction. And finally, we end with external rotation again. So I'm trying to rotate. This ankle is going to come up. The femur is going to rotate down. And I get the ankle off the opposite knee. Once I'm there, I'm contracting as hard as I can, trying to push this ankle up. I can get a little push there that'll help to activate. So 360 and relax and then do the other side. So that's one cycle. You would start out one cycle per side, see how that feels and work your way up to three or four cycles per side. In terms of frequency, doing it two to three times a week is definitely what I would prescribe. Okay, finally, we've done the ERE technique. Now it's time to integrate. So functional integration, typically use closed chain compound movement patterns for integration. And that's how we get transfer from greater mobility in an open chain kind of artificial environment to greater mobility in the movements that you do in sport and everyday life. So this technique, we're doing the hip ER, hip external rotation split squat. Kind of looks like a yoga move, but I hate when people say, is what you're doing yoga? Because no, it's not yoga. Yoga is a very specific thing with funny Indian names, and typically the focus is on getting into the pose and holding that pose, whether it's active or passive, holding that pose. Here, it's all about specific activation patterns from a scientific and biomechanical perspective, not just a bunch of made up stuff that sounds cool. I'm not hating on yoga, it's just not yoga, okay? So hip ER split squat. What we wanna do is rotate so that my pelvis is square this way. It's actually better to start this way and then stick the other foot out, externally rotate this hip. This is where we're focused on. So pelvis, we wanna stay square to this wall. And what we're, all we're doing is a split squat, bending this leg. So here, I like to put hands behind the back just to help you keep that pelvis square to the wall. And then the whole time I'm going down into the split squat, I'm driving this knee out. And then I'm, most of my weight's up here. 
I'm pushing myself back here. So the hip is in an externally rotated position and I'm trying to get more external rotation as I do this split squat or lunge, stationary lunge type move. I think it looks like a warrior or something, I'm not sure. So I'm going down, controlling with this leg. Keep driving this knee out that way to get greater and greater external rotation. That's all it is. So you can see how we've gone from dissociation and activation to end range expansion to functional integration, which is closed chain, fun, complex compound movement pattern. There we have it. That's going to give you greater external hip rotation if you work it. And like I said, I suggest working it two to three times a week. And if you do this for four to six weeks, you're going to get results. There's no question about it. So give it a shot. If it works for you, if you liked it, if you thought it was cool, hit me up with a like or whatever those things are on YouTube. And if you want to work the hips in a full, comprehensive, progressive manner, then check out my hip control course because we go through internal, external rotation, hip flexion, hip extension, adduction, abduction, everything in a 12-week, three-phase course, multi-phase course. I think there's seven phases in this one, but it's structured in an easy-to-follow manner. Okay, so check that out. I'll link to it at the end, and I will see you next time. Peace.